today I'm going to be cooking for royalty. Now, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit. What I'm really doing is cooking a dish that is found on a menu for the wedding of Henry IV to Joanna of Navarre, which took place in England in 1403. Now, what I like about this dish is the fact that Henry IV, formerly known as Henry Bolingbroke, usurped the throne of Richard II in 1399. And not only that, he goes on to use his cookery book, Form of Curry, in which the dish that I'm cooking today is found, the recipe for that dish. It was all rather convenient for him. So the dish I'm going to focus on is called Viande Royale, which means royal dish. Yes, it's a rather imaginative name, isn't it? So what's actually in this dish? Well, to demystify it a little bit, essentially it's just a starchy staple that's been spiced up, tarted up a little bit, or rather a lot in fact, that was served alongside other things such as roast meats and roast birds or, or fish dishes as well, and some other meat dishes too with sauces, and it's referred to as a pottage, um, by which we don't mean um, soup or stew, but actually any dish that's cooked inside a pot. So Vienne Royale was not eaten by itself, but was served along with other dishes that were brought to the table. In this case, with Henry and Joanna, it was brought to the table on the first course, along with some other dishes which I'll list in a moment. I suppose the nearest comparison is mashed potato or rice, which we eat with other foods, with richer foods often, uh, rather than just by itself, though I could eat a whole saucepan of very buttery mashed potato all by itself very easily. As you can see, at Henry and Joanna's wedding, Viande Royale was served with filettes in galantine, a pork dish which I'm also going to cook, as well as gros char, the big meats of mutton, pork and beef, probably boiled, cygnets, young swans, capons of high fat, pheasants, so these would be roasted birds, and also chewitas, chewits, little pies filled with chicken, pork, and boiled egg and spiced up with ginger. There may also have been specific sauces that were served along with the roast meats. The Anne Royale also appears inside a collection of suggested menus found inside an early 15th century manuscript, and it appears for the Feast of Michaelmas on the 29th of September, so good timing here. It's listed right at the end of the third and final course, and it's meant to be eaten along with roasted venison, partridges, woodcock, plovers, and larks. I've decided then to cook today a partridge as well. There were meant to be two partridges, but my supplier could only find one, and there were certainly no larks available. So, let's get cooking. So next I'm going to make the spices for the Viande Royale. To start off with I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons of sugar into my uh, mortar. I call this a spice because that's what the medieval cooks would have, how they would have thought of sugar as a spice. And then I'm going to add a generous pinch of saffron show you that alongside one yes just one peppercorn because I don't want this too hot so in that goes I'm going to use a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger this is ground and I've ground it myself from dried ginger but it's freshly ground so in that goes The merest pinch of ground clove is the next thing I'm going to put in. I, I, I ground this up separately this morning um, because it's very difficult to control the amount of clove in a dish and it very easily becomes uh, too medicinal. And so I want a really tiny weeny amount. To be honest, I, I did originally make uh, put in about a, clove, um, a whole clove's worth 
but I found that even that was too medicinal for this. Let's just brush a little of that in. There we go. As I said, the merest pinch of clove. And the final spice I'm going to put in here is really quite exciting. I'll show you a close-up of that. Put it into the tin, you can see it better there, to the lid. And this is not cinnamon, but from the cinnamon tree, and it's known as cinnamon buds, or flower of cinnamon, as they called it in the medieval period. They look like cloves. Put one on my hand there. They're not as strong as cinnamon, it's more of a more delicate flavour. And I want about 20 of these, approximately. One, two, three, four, five, six, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There we go. The cinnamon buds are quite hard, so give them a good whack to start off with. Mm, it does smell great. It is grinding fairly quickly, but you do really need to get this as fine as possible. Now I'm really going to insist on getting this as fine as possible. Because it's a royal dish, you don't want to be finding bits of cinnamon bud. Well, the king doesn't want to be finding bits of cinnamon bud as he eats his food. So that's the spice mix that's going to go into the viande royale. So I'm going to make the viande royale now. And to start off with, I just put about uh, two tablespoons, plus a few extra, pine nuts into a dry pan which is on a high heat, and I've just toasted them and until they start to turn a little golden brown. That takes about a minute or two. Be careful not to let them burn. And I can put those aside. So next we need to take some wine. And I've got 300 millilitres of it here. Now, I wrote a blog post about the wine that goes into this dish. In the original recipe in form of curry, it says you use either Greek wine or Rhenish wine with added honey to make it sweet. Now Greek wine was probably most likely sweet wine. If you want to read the blog it's really interesting because it's not quite as straightforward as that and I reached some sort of half conclusions about it so please go over and have a look at that. But I've actually used as my modern equivalent a it is actually a Greek wine. It's a Greek sweet wine white muscat grape and it's essentially a, a dessert wine or a, a liqueur wine. So I'm going to put that into my saucepan. Now before I heat this up, I'm going to add gradually the rice flour that goes into it. This is what makes this type of dish what it is. Uh, a rice-based, starchy, staple food. And there are lots of these that appeared in the medieval period. Uh, some of the names are moray, which was named after mulberries, although it didn't have mulberries in, it was coloured to make it look like it had, and rosé, which used uh, rose flowers, and other dishes as well. And these were all served in a very similar way to the way this is served. So I'm just going to sprinkle in, gradually, the rice flour into the wine. You've got to be careful not for this not to go lumpy. If you did this straight away with the uh, wine heated up, uh, as I've done in the past, then you'll end up with a lumpy mixture. So just gradually add that, a tablespoon at a time. In total I'm using six level tablespoons. Last bit. Of course, with this being rice flour, 
and not wheat flour, I can actually eat this, and it's a genuine medieval gluten-free dish. Right, that's all nicely dissolved in. Now what I'm going to do is heat this up gradually, and this is going to take about five minutes to cook off the rawness of the flour, and it will become quite thick, and that's what you're looking for, quite a thick dish. The original recipe says it has to be standing, so it holds its own shape, as it were. It stands up in effect. Now my little hob here is rather noisy, so I'm going to have to try and talk over this as we carry on. Gradually bring it up to a simmer. As you can see, it's just beginning to thicken now, so do keep stirring. You'll find eventually you'll need to keep stirring quite vigorously as this gets thicker and thicker. There we go, it's really gone thick now. So do keep stirring fast, and I'm afraid you do have to do this for quite a few minutes because you don't really want the raw taste of the rice flour in there. So this cooks it out, as chefs say. As you can see, it's getting thicker and thicker. I can't overemphasize how important it is to keep it moving. And yes, your hand will really ache. Just going to taste it. Just another minute, I think, and it's almost cooked out. So that's your basic. Viand Royale mix. It will get a little thicker because I'm going to cook it a little bit more. But first I need to add the other ingredients. So this is the spice mix that we made earlier. And that's just going to get put into this and stirred in. I'm doing this off the heat actually. I'll put it back onto the heat in a few moments. Now you can see there but the colours change a little bit, and that's the saffron just adding a lovely hue of goldenness there. Not that strong. You do need quite a bit of saffron in this dish. It doesn't uh, overpower, the, the flavour of the saffron doesn't overpower the dish. But you do need to use a good generous pinch, as I did, in order to, to get a good golden colour, as you can see. That's lovely, isn't it? Because the powder, the spice mix that I did, was nice and fine, there's no big lumps in there. Now, I'm going to change the colour a bit more now, and you might think this is strange because you've just put saffron on to get the gold colour. But I'm now going to add mulberry syrup. Now, I'm using mulberries because they were used as a substitute for sanders, or sandalwood. Not the aromatic type of sandalwood, but this was used as a well-known colourant in medieval cookery. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of mulberry syrup, which you can find in specialist shops. Middle Eastern shops are very good for this kind of thing. Now this is going to change the colour significantly, obviously, because it's a reddish colour. But the saffron still works along with the mulberry to give it a sort of, as you'll see, a lovely golden red colour. Now, I'm going to put the heat back on again and cook this for another couple of minutes. I think I'm going to add a bit more mulberry because I want to get a, a bit more red colour out of this, so I'm going to add another tablespoon. I'm 
Now sugar is added to this dish in the original recipe, but because of sugar in the syrup, and because I've got sugar in the spice mix, I've decided that I don't need to actually add additional sugar. But if you've got a very sweet tooth, you can do. But remember, this is gonna be served with savory food. But I have to say that I've had this as a pudding with honey pulled all over it, and it was really nice. So there you go, we've got a really nice colour now, a sort of golden red hue. That's lovely, and it's a really lovely consistency. As I said, as you can see, it's actually holding its own shape. It's standing. Right, that's enough cooking. I'm now just gonna add a pinch of salt. Yes, salt is recommended in the recipe. And there goes my oven. Need to taste this. The salt goes in there to create a counterpoint to the sweetness. And it really is important to put it in. It just, just changes and shifts the flavour profile. Uh, just enough, I think, to make it something that would go with savoury food. I'm going to put a bit more salt in. Finally, I'm going to add most of the toasted pine nuts that I made earlier. So I'm just going to leave a few for decoration at the end, just about a teaspoonful, that's all. So that just gives it a lovely, slightly nutty crunch. I think that looks delicious. So I want to transfer this to a pretty little bowl and serve that with the whole meal when I finished at the end. Well, it's time for my little royal wedding feast. And since Henry and Joanna are a bit late, I'm just going to go and tuck in. I'll start with a little bit of that pork galantine with some of the viande royale. Without a word of a lie, that is delicious and it's so surprising how well it goes with the Vienne Royale. That kind of sweetness really works well with pork. Then just grabbing a little raisin as well, a bit of the, the lovely sauce. It's beautiful. Mm. Now for some of the Vienne Royale with the partridge and a tiny bit of ginger sauce as well. Mm. It's really good. The partridge has stayed lovely and moist. The ginger sauce just gives it a little sharpness and heat. And it goes, again, goes so really well with the Vienne Royale. The sweetness doesn't overpower it. The spices in the Vienne Royale have worked really well. They've melded lovely together. And it just is a, an excellent foil for this partridge. Mm.